Hey everyone, Tanner Bell here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we have had so many requests for giving some tips and tricks for working with a household iron with your heat transfer vinyl or iron on. So this is what we've cut out for today's project. And we're going to give you guys all the tips and tricks we can think of for giving the best success with an iron. Now, real quick, I do wanna share with you guys the difference between a Cricut Easy Press and a household iron. So first of all, the Easy Press has evenly distributed um, temperature. So that means the entire plate of that Easy Press is going to be the same temperature. Um, it's really important to have evenly distributed um, temperature on that plate um, because it is going to give you effortless results really easily. What we're going to have to do for today's project is it's gonna take probably three times longer to do today's project with a household iron versus an Easy Press. Notice I said it will be done. So if you just can afford a household iron, I hope these trips, um, these tips and tricks will help you. But that just is another factor to say, hey, the Easy Press is made for this um, and sometimes will help you and save you from having a craft fail. And honestly, in my opinion, you'll make your money back from the time and the material you could potentially lose. So we have some you know, tips and tricks for you. <clears throat> we are using a Cricut Easy Press mat today. Um, they're really affordable. You can find them on sale. So if you cannot afford an Easy Press, I would consider these mats. They're really awesome and handy. But again, if you do not have a mat or you cannot afford one in your budget, what I would recommend is a terry cloth towel folded three or four times. So whether you're working with a Easy Press or an iron, always have a stable, sturdy surface area. Have a sturdy craft table. If you don't have a sturdy craft table, feel free to use the floor, um, your kitchen countertop, anything like that. You want something sturdy to apply pressure with. So that's really important as well. You'll also see we have a Teflon sheet. Um, you can do this. It's great for multi-layered projects or anything like that. You can apply it down. Honestly, for simple one layer images, we don't find that we need them that much, but you can also always grab a Teflon sheet as you get more advanced with using your um, heat transfer vinyl. So if you guys are excited, let's jump into it. So we have our shirt right here and we have already cut out our design. So this is kind of where we'll be placing it. But what we want to go ahead and do and what we've been doing is we took our household iron and we turned it to the highest setting um, on the iron. So we just went all the way up to that highest setting um, for, you know, trying to get it the warmest. We do not want to have any um, steam for this. Steaming is not good. You want to turn that all the way off. Um, I know it will probably be on from when you're ironing because I know how easy and better it is. Be sure to not be pressing any buttons and I try to just make sure there's no water at all in it when I'm going to do this process. So what we're going to do before we apply it down is I like to preheat the shirt. So we're going to go ahead and preheat the shirt. Um, what this does, it's going to allow us to preheat it and get out any wrinkles. So I like to kind of treat it um, not like an iron because you want to lift it and, you know, reapply it. So there's some, you know, different things you can see here. They're kind of indentions. So just kind of be gentle with it so you don't get all of those indentions. But as you can see here, it looks much better after we've preheated it. So I'm just going to work around here real quick. And once we're happy, we're going to lift up and we're going to apply our decal onto the shirt. So just like so. And I'm telling you, the iron does get pretty warm, but here's what we're going to do now. So there is no timer. So I would recommend kind of having something on your phone. So we're going to open this up to our phone and we're going to start a little stopwatch. So we're going to press start <clears throat> and we're going to apply the right side down for 30 seconds. And again, apply some pressure. You can, you know, give it some, some movement um, by just applying that pressure and we're going to work with it for 30 seconds. I like to try to stay to the middle of the iron. And honestly, guys, I think you'll find where your iron's the warmest after you know you work with it just a little bit. Um, you know, it does just take a little bit more. So it's been 30 seconds, so we're gonna stop and reset that. We can lift it up and you can start looking at it. And this is a great example. This area right here has been applied down really well. Um, and you can tell by the bubbles. This down here, even though it was in our hit area, um, it's not 
have any bubbles or shows anything that it has been heated down. So we're going to move over and now we're going to do the left side. So we can just start that clock again and we're going to let that time down for 30 seconds. And then after this, I'll probably take it and go sideways for that bottom area that's just not getting enough heat um, that it needs. But honestly, guys, with a 9 by 9 easy press, this would be done in 30 seconds. And again, guys, if you have a household iron and you are not using the easy press mat, maybe that could be something that could help you, um, you know, set yourself up for success. So it's been 30 seconds or go lift up and you can kind of look at it. And again, this area is looking pretty good, but just down here, um, you know, you're not getting too, you know, well of heat. So now we're going to just reset and start that again for 30 seconds and be sure to apply some pressure. Um, we'll talk about what we'll do next here in a second for hitting the back. So we're just going to, you know, give some firm pressure and kind of go back and forth with it just to make sure it's nice and firm, just like so. And then we're practically at the 30 second mark. And then what we can do is just go up here and hit this just for a few more seconds. If you, you know, feel like there's any area up there that may not be, you know, perfectly hit. So I just left the timer running and we'll go up to maybe, you know, 50 seconds. Okay, so we can lift that up. And now, you know, you should be able to always, whether you're using an easy press or not, be able to look at it and kind of see some bubbles appearing. That means the, you know, the vinyl, the heat transfer vinyl is not stuck to the transfer backing on the little plastic sheet. It's actually adhered to the shirt. So what we're going to do now is lift it up and fold it on the back. So now we're going to just be able to hit this um, for a little bit of time. And you can move it around if you would like, if it's a one layer design like so, you do wanna be gentle with it, but overall I like to get everyone into the process of hitting it and then picking it up and moving it over and repeating the process. So I don't really like to have people moving it around just because that allows for a little bit more room to have mistakes. So once you're happy um, hitting the back, that's just a little precaution. You can flip it back to the front all right, guys, after you let it cool, all we're going to do is be able to peel it back. And reveal our design. And look at this. With a household iron, you are totally able to use heat transfer vinyl. And honestly, it looks awesome. Like you cannot tell that this was heat transfer vinyl at all. This looks totally awesome. I love how it looks with just a little bit extra time. You are able to master using a household iron for your heat transfer vinyl projects. And it's super awesome. What did you guys think? I love sharing with you guys more economical ways of making awesome craft projects. So if you guys have been on the fence, whether getting an easy press or sticking with a household iron, I hope you guys enjoyed our comparison. I do have to say, if you're wanting effortless crafting, the easy press is a no brainer and I highly recommend investing in it. Maybe not as soon as you get a machine, maybe a few months from now, maybe at the next holiday season, um, put it on your list and have that. But if you cannot afford one, feel free to grab the easy press mat because I do feel like that helps out a lot. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. If you're brand new here, hit that subscribe button so you can see all of our future videos and check out more to Cricut tutorials. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment and we will get back to you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.